Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the presentation now will be jointly presented by Sri Chetan Sahai, CEO, Embro Asia, and Mr. Armando, General Manager and Chief Technology Officer, SEMA Systems. Mr. Chetan Sahai is the CEO and has extensive experience working with MNCs, including GE, Lazard, and McKinsey, and has an MBA from INSEED and a degree from Bocconi University. Mr. Armando is the General Manager and Chief Technology Officer and is an inventor with over 40 plus years in railways with specialized companies such as Enceldo Breda, Meyer, and Syra Electronics. He has a degree in electrical engineering from the Polytechnico of Milan. A very warm welcome to Mr. Chetan Sahai and Mr. Armando, and over to you for your presentation. Thank you very much for that introduction, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chetan Sahai, and today uh, I'm the CEO of uh, SEMA Systems, and today I'd like to talk to you about a question. Are active fire protection systems with near zero false alarms and low maintenance costs possible? Why are we asking that question? So into, into, uh, currently, we have some regulation which is taking um, its sources from um, different aspects. And we've got an existing technology, some of which comes from the industrial world, which is applied to railways. The regulation is leading an increase of fire detection systems on, uh, on trains and metro. While this does protect the passengers, it does come with, uh, with a negative, which is that there are many false alarms. The more fire detection systems there are, the more probability of a false alarm occurring and therefore an increase in costs. There will be a paradigm shift. So in July 2021, just recently last month, the Italian Standards Agency called UNI has released the 11565 which is a standard focused on fire protection on railways. This, coupled with some uh, new technology, can lead to an increase in fire detection and suppression systems, because again, they're protecting passengers and property. But applied properly, it can actually help to reduce false alarms and consequently reduce the costs of operating fire detection systems on trains. Let's take a look. One by one, I'll split it into three components. Um, we we'll look at regulation first, then we we'll look at false alarms, and then we we'll look at costs. Regulation, I find this very interesting from an industry standpoint. I look at ARGE, I look at EN54, I look at EN50155, etc., etc., and they are norms coming from two different directions. Some of them come from the angle of protecting fire. For example, ARGE guidelines or EN 54200 or EN 45545. Others come from the world of uh, making sure that the, uh, the components are, uh, are not faulty. So the EN 50155, etc. There is not still a unified standard, and I mean standard which is uh, regulated, to, uh, to, to, to govern fire on rolling stock. UNI 11.565-2021 does exactly that. Not only, it also has some of the most stringent testing criteria in order uh, for a system to be compliant with that standard. And as you can see from this table, I'll um, make it maybe focus on the detectors. Those uh, are generally required to comply with EN54 and it, it, its family. But this is a norm or a standard that is developed for industry. So while it does have testing requirements on EMC and, 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 and other similar tests, these conditions are much simpler than the conditions that we find on trains. And this gap is addressed by EN50155, where the type tests required for EMC or shocks and vibrations, temperature, power supply tests, etc., are much more stringent, which ensures that they can withstand the pressures and the environment on the train. But even today, we are using detectors uh, compliant only with EN54 only. 
we look at the, the ARGE, I refer to them because those are the gold standard, but even the ARGE are focused on uh, passengers and they're relative, they're not as strong in the technical departments. If you look at the requirements they have on testing, they're much weaker than the one that are now required by Uni 11565. Just and as, a, as an example, the fire, the intensity of the fire is two megawatts in order to pass the, uh, the, the, Italian, the new Italian standard. And it also um, covers, it looks at the open environment where uh, air is flowing, which is much more difficult. It does need to protect also the luggage, which is one of the biggest factors of fire on a train. And, um, and uh, so, so this puts everything together. It is not just an Italian standard. So it is, um, UNI is the Ente Italiano di Normazione. So it comes up with the standards in the country. This particular standard has been worked together with ANSFISA, which is the agency which is responsible for protection on railways, and with uh, accreditation labs and industry bodies. So it is a standard that has de been developed with a wide group of uh, parties, not just a set of um, private companies. It is recognized by the Italian government and also by Europe. And in fact, it represents the Italian legislative activity at the International Standards Organization and the uh, European CEN. Just to be clear, UNI 11565 is not a standalone. It actually does recall a lot of the EN standards, as uh, we will see. The other point to highlight here is that it comprehensively covers fire and rail and the passenger and technical compartments and luggage burning. And as I mentioned earlier, the testing requirements are quite stringent. In fact, uh, from the 2016 version to 2021, the intensity of the fire and the tests are much more complex. This is a visual example of a two megawatt fire happening without, in, on free burning without any protection. And on the right hand side with protection that is compliant with the uni 11565 standards which means two megawatt fire notice here how the cushion is still intact so this is showing that the, the fire suppression has been extremely effective in protecting the property compared to a free burning now that we've looked at regulation and how unify 11565 can add a new dimension to regulating uh, fire uh, on, on trains. Let's see how we can uh, uh, reduce false alarms. To do that, it is important to understand that false alarms are not just related to detectors. And it is important to understand the entire system and what are the potential faults in that system. So we have articulated, there's of course the detectors and the environmental conditions and deceptive phenomena that affect it. It could also be, however, a poor design quality of the entire system and uh, of the materials used, both in terms of components, for example, plastic versus metal components, or EN5015 non-compliant versus compliant products, and also poor quality communication. So there are some uh, hardware connections, uh, some, some run on loops uh, on uh, lines which are hardware connections, but there's other technologies which use a secure bus for the communication of the signal. And lastly, uh, maintenance can also be an issue. And looking at these in a little bit more detail, just to, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to walk you through this entire slide, but to give you some example, what we're talking about is from environmental influence, it is the electromagnetic disturbances, temperature gradients, shocks and vibrations. It is <clears throat> um, the poor design quality, uh, poor material quality, the kind of communication uh, interface we're using, or the kinds of cuts components that are being used. Some are high components, some are high quality, some are low quality. By design quality, what I uh, what I want to highlight here is we can use a mix of technologies in different compartments along the train. 
which will be uh, a, a more, which can be a more effective way of um, of eliminating uh, false alarms. For example, Uni 11565 actually talks about a detector, a carbon monoxide detector. And it also says that as long as the system meets the, uh, the performance requirements, we can also avoid having a reference to EN54 because uh, this is being tested for railway standards. The software capability is also very important because how do you interpret the signals that are coming from the detectors? And uh, in terms of poor maintenance, many detectors perform an auto compensation algorithm to compensate for some effects of dust accumulation, which in India is a big issue. But in the long term period, if this is not uh, maintained properly, these can be become sensitive and give false alarms. So again, the point being, there are a variety of reasons that can cause false alarms, and it needs to be looked at from uh, different angles to be able to mitigate them, but it can be done. Maintenance costs. On this slide, I'd like to spend a couple of minutes because this shows some of the difference in levels that can be achieved by different fire safety systems. So what are the main areas that impact maintenance costs? We can uh, group them in three categories. The first one is the quality of the diagnostics. The better diagnostics you have, the better you can uh, identify a fault and even have preventive maintenance. The second would be build quality of the entire system. And the third is design and architecture. So for example, let's take a look at a system that we could just um, subjectively define as good. So that would be able to define there is a fault. Better would be there is a fault in this location. So addressable detectors do that job. But even better is there is a fault in this location for this reason. So I need to tell you the, the, the reason for that fault. A, a good system would not necessarily store this data. A better system would collect all the data and send it over as a data dump for the diagnostic team to analyze. But even better, if the system can tell you the fault is exactly here and that can be communicated to the servicer when he's doing the maintenance, that would save time and cost. In terms of quality of diagnostics, uh, you can check the detector only. But if you can extend this to uh, all electrical components, the system becomes stronger and uh, maintenance becomes easier. Many false alarms, well, we call it good, but not, it's not really good, but it's the lowest level here. And, yeah, and the best is near, near zero false alarms. Build quality. Now, the, for detectors, a good would be that there's, it is compliant with EN54. A better one is that the detector is compliant with EN50155. So it's strong um, um, meeting the regulatory standards. But even better is that there is an SHD or a carbon monoxide detector with EN50155. In terms of bus, a normal detector hardware connection would be good. And even better would be a detector bus on an RS485, which is very secure. Good would be plastic terminal blocks, better would be metallic, connect, uh, metallic connectors, shielded cables, which are just more resilient, resilient to, uh, in, in case of fire. And so uh, components that are more, uh, more uh, resistant to fire would lead to fewer chances of shortcuts, uh, short circuits also. Now we look at not only uh, quality of diagnostics and build quality, but also design as an impact. I will, should I go th I'll go through all of them or some of them. Selected EN5015 type tests. So some tests that are required on 50155 is good, but all the type tests required across the entire system, not only components, is better. And uh, doing this uh, according to Uni 11565, which has even more stringent criteria, is even better. And it includes EN50155. So it is on top of EN50155. In terms of design, there are systems which come from the industry 
and they take a whole full train loop based on a traditional um, hardware connection. But even better, uh, uh, better would be doing that same uh, traditional loop, uh, traditional connection, but at a car level. So the system is at a car level, not at the full train level. And even better could be doing a car level on an RS485 detector bus, which have uh, which includes the software. Why? Because in the even better scenario, you can never ever lose the entire train. Maximum you can use lose a few cars. Coming to designer architecture, uh, there are various ways of building uh, detectors. You can go from, re uh, from regular to addressable to interchangeable ones. There are ways of using uh, LHD in the technical compartments. And um, lastly, last but not least, um, cables. The uh, cables used can also impact both the installation and maintenance costs as uh, it can be built with your cables. How, what, are, how, what does this lead to is that in the even better scenario, you can think of preventive maintenance. You can be more flexible in the scheduling of that maintenance because you know when to work on a specific car. Uh, managing spare parts can become also uh, easier. And in a simpler system, uh, you may not require specialized personnel. So bottom line, less cost, less time, and easier. So in conclusion, the three points I'd like you to take away here are number one, there is a nice a dedicated norm, UNI 11565, that can be used to build better fire protection systems on rail and metro. There are also technological and design solutions that can help minimize false alarms and reduce maintenance costs. And this diagnostic and communication ability through advanced electronics can also be extended to other train subsystems. Thank you very much for your um, time and attention. Uh, we are uh, more than happy to be in touch. Our contact details are